Oops. Hello, everybody. Welcome to day two of our 12 days of video, um, videos, projects, um, which, you know, we should be much farther along in this process, but it's kind of like the shopping that I'm doing and the wrapping that I'm doing. They should all be much farther along as well, and they're not. So I will catch up and um, probably this weekend maybe do more than one video each day, today and tomorrow. This is light as Let's see how I can get that on my project without being on me. I don't know. Maybe that'll work. We'll try. We'll see. Um, I had told you all about this wonderful punch box and that it is on sale, retiring and 40% off. And it's such a great deal. Um, you, you need to get this. So I promised that I would tell you, if you buy this punch box, I'm going to show you lots of ways to use everything that's in it and make some great projects as well. And then you've got this great tin you can store them all in. So it's awesome. But inside this tin came a clear block. Okay, you need that for mounting your stamps. A stamp set with six stamps on it. Of course, it's blank now because I have all of my stamps down here already on blocks ready to use. And then it came with, comes with a, a two little ink spots. Ink spots are, no, there was just one here. Okay. So ink spots are like, like this. They're little bitty, um, little bitty containers of ink, right? You open it up and you ink up your stamps. And you get two. You get Call Me Clover and Real Red. Now those colors are great for the Marion Bright. All is bright. Mm, darn. Hold on. Bear with me. So this punch box is on, it's right in, right in the center. As soon as you open your, your holiday catalog, it's on page two. And it's called the Christmas Traditions Punch Box. It's $45, was $45. Now it's on sale for 40% off of that. But the All is Bright Designer Series paper is on page six. I believe it's still available. Um, if it is not, then the paper from the annual catalog annual catalog I don't have out here. Darn it. Oh wait, maybe I do. I do. Look at that. Okay, so on the annual catalog, page 90, under the mistletoe designer series paper, um, it's got some great papers in that too. So that that's available. It's um, a pack for eleven dollars. So I'm gonna turn this. I'm gonna leave these here for just a second, and I'll turn the camera around so you can maybe see those a little bit better. But um, I am out of the current paper, the current designer series paper. So I had to go up to the attic and find some retired designer series paper to show you some things that you can do. Now, that's okay. Remember, we are trying to use our paper, not hoard our paper. So we're going to use it. We're going to go back and we're going to use that retired paper and whatever else we can, you know, can use up. We're going to. With less than half of a pack of designer series paper, I made 33 different gift card holders. So we're going to make those same five designs today using retired paper. The stamps from the punch box traditions, Christmas traditions punch box kit. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? Um, we're going to use those stamps and the punch that comes. I forgot to mention the punch. You get a punch with this also. So we're going to use that punch and a few other items. But I really wanted to keep it very simple, minimal, extra supplies. Um, and, and, and I'll show you ways that even if I'm using something different, you can still use what you have on hand. So... Let's let's get started with this. Let me see if I can manage. Okay, so let me okay. Do this. And then this. And then this. Alright, I think I got it. So what you're looking at is the holiday catalog. And down here, page two. So this is the punch box. See the stamps? Aren't they so cute? 
right? So all of that, the, the box, the punch, the set of six stamps, a clear block, and two ink spots, right? On sale, 40% off. All is Bright Designer Series paper is on page six of the holiday catalog. And at the, the designs that I'm going to show you, the samples I'm going to show you first are using that set of paper. Then there is also Christmas paper in the annual catalog right here. It's called Under the Mistletoe. It is on page 95. So any designer series paper, you can, you can improvise beautifully. That's what I've done today. So let me get my box out of the way. Now the paper I'm using today is, I believe, from a year ago. And it, uh, it's a vanilla paper. It coordinates with very vanilla, cherry cobbler, and garden green. So that's not, unfortunately, these are not the colors that are included in the punch box kit. But use whatever colors you want. You've got those colors, and if their paper works with them, use those colors for, you know, for sure. If not, go ahead and use what does. So I'm going to show you this paper from a year ago that we're going to use. Um, I think I can set it out. I think I've got everything cut. If not, I'll reach down there on the floor and get it. So these are the designs from um, from the current paper, All is Bright. Okay, so there's this little Merry Christmas. Your gift card slides right in here. So isn't that pretty? Little gold ornaments, golden cream ornaments. Really pretty. And then there's this one with the little stockings. There's not even any stamping on this one, right? You could, you could tuck your gift card right here or it kind of opens up like those old matchbooks. Opens up and reveals all these stockings in here, right? I would probably write my message on the back here, okay? This one is actually half of an envelope, right? And I put a little liner in there to attach the gift card right here, okay? And then this one, we can actually, let's see how I did this. Actually untie this and reveal. Put your gift card here and write your message. Okay. And then this one might be my favorite, but it's a belly band. So it slides off and you write your message right here. And these sides are actually um, adhered down. This one is not, but I missed a step when I created this one. Um, but it makes it has a pocket for your gift card to go in. And then the belly band just slides right on. So those are the five designs, but we're going to use the paper that I have on hand. I encourage you to use the paper you have on hand. And we're going to use the stamps from the um, traditions, Christmas traditions punch box kit, project kit. Oh, I'm sure I got that all messed up. So the first one that we're going to do is the sister to this one. Okay. And here it is. All made up. So I have used, let me get these in order over here, my cheat sheets. So again, this one has no stamping on it right? And your designer series paper is cut three by 12. So out of one sheet of paper, you're going to get four of these. Your cardstock on the back is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So you can get six, I'm thinking six out of one sheet of cardstock. So this is very, um, well, what's my word? It's going to go far. That's what I want to say. Um, all right. So Let's, let's look at this. Nope. All right, so I've already cut my card, my gift card holder base. And then this is scored, my designer series paper is scored at four and at eight. Okay. So I'm just going to fold it down and fold it up. And then I didn't even score this other part, because depending on what your pattern is, 
how deep you want that fold line to be. So I can take my bone folder, and burnish my edges, and then I'm just going to adhere it down. So I mean, if you are giving gift cards this year, this gift card holder is the way to go. You can make up so many. Now, some people ask me sometimes if I sell my made up, my ready-made projects, my samples, my gift card holders, my Christmas cards and such, and I do. And I have quite a, um, <laughs> quite a number here because I've made, oh, I don't know, 30, close to 40 gift card holders now. And this ribbon is from a, a previous year also, just leftovers, using up what I have. Just going to tie it in a knot, and actually I need to leave a little more give. So I'm not big on tying bows. Hey, can you see behind me at all? You probably can't in the current view, but there is a sneak peek from the Occasions catalog back there. Next week, I actually am going to hold my card class on Thursday. So 3.30. Oh, my goodness, I clearly can't even tie a knot and talk. Um, 3.30 or 6, come and make eight cards. I've shown the designs before. The mailman's here. It's not UPS, so he's not going quite as bonkers as he does. He's not a fan of UPS. All right, so there's my knot. And holder number one is done. Pull that up like that. So how cute, right? Super, super easy. Takes no time. And four of them from one sheet of designer series paper and one piece of cardstock. No stamping. Doesn't get much easier than that. The second one, these are not in order, which I guess doesn't really matter, except it doesn't matter at all. The second one is the one using the belly band. Okay, so it has one piece of cardstock that is cut five by seven and three quarters. Score it at six and at two and a half. Then that leftover piece that you took off, let that be your band, right? It doesn't have to be eight by one. It can be, but I just used the leftover uh, three quarter inch piece that I had from cutting off that um, seven, you know, your paper is eight and a half inch wide. So I cut off that three quarter inch and that became my band on the one that I made. Then you'll need whatever light color cardstock coordinates for in here where you can make your um, write your sentiment, write your greeting, and your gift card is going to slide right in here. So very pretty. This is the one that is using the All is Bright paper. And then this is the one I made from my retired cardstock. Okay. So let's go through that. This one does have a little stamping on it. So here are my pieces already scored. So this is scored at two and a half and at six. Two and a half and six if you're on your scoreboard. And that's just going to fold over like this. And then that three quarter inch piece that I have left over is going to make my belly band. I can actually cut off a piece of that. All right. Then I'm trying to put this together and then we'll do the stamping in the center. So we get a little design going the same way. So how many of you actually have um, some paper that, you know, 
you haven't cut into, it's just too pretty to cut, um, don't know what you were going to do with it yet, I'm here to tell you, there will be more paper. Just use it. I'm so pleased to not being, to not hoarding my paper right now, to have made some gorgeous bags and boxes and then these gift card holders. It just feels good. So jump on in, use your paper. Now I use that Tombow liquid glue because it helps me move my paper around a little bit until I get it to what looks like centered, lined up for me. It's not always. I'm not real good at that. And then I store it in a shot glass point side down so the glue is pretty much always ready to go. Oops. So if you need some gift card holders and you'd like to run by and pick some up, we'll sell them for $3 each or you can get two for five dollars. You might not want this one because it's going to be listing a little right. It won't be noticeable. All right. so let me burnish these edges. Okay. Then I punched out oops. I, I went ahead and punched out my little vanilla pieces. I think it's easier for, it was easier for me to line them up this way than it was to line up the punch because I made a bunch earlier and I, 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 stayed, I spaced them too close together and then I couldn't punch them out because they were too close together. This way it was just easier. I could punch them right, you know, right out in a row, conserve my paper and then just line them up as I use them. Now, we've got all kinds of little sentiments up here. I've got Have a Holly Jolly Christmas, Let Heaven and Nature Sing, Sending Christmas Wishes, Jingle All the Way, that's the one I used here, and then May Your Season Be Merry and Bright. I think that's the one I'm going to use this time. Let's, let's mix it up, right? And then I want to be sure and show you how to do this with a marker as well, so that if you want to use different colors, you can do that. Um, but I wanted to make it really simple and show you two ink colors. Wouldn't even have to really use two ink colors. Um, I think I did one of these in green. Okay, so there's my, my stamped image. That's all I needed for it. I did use a piece of green glimmer paper because I had it. Of course, now I can't find it. It's hiding from me. There it is. So I want to show you how, how to do this. So this is the same punch that I just did. And I'm just going to punch. This is the Glimmer Paper Pack that's in the holiday catalog. And then I'm going to cut it in half. And then I can make a little border on the top and a little border on the bottom. The glimmer paper sticks, yikes, sticks best with um, glue dots or a strong adhesive. So I'm going to put two little glue dots on each half of this. Yeah. <laughs> And then decide I can give it as you know as wide or narrow a band as I'd like. I hope my head's not in the way. Okay, so that. And then I also used the pretty label punch and punched out a label in gold foil. Right, and I use dimensionals. To 
pop that up. And I'm just going to center that there. And even though these are not cherry cobbler, I like I liked it on this. But you could use anything. You could use pearls. Um, we're going to use some of the faceted gems on one of the others. And I punched out some sprigs. Where did they go? Okay, the sprigs are hiding. So we can punch some more. That way I can find the first ones. So the sprig punch, it is a carrying over punch. Just adds a little something. Ugh. Now my glimmer, my gold glimmer paper is not the new nice glimmer paper. This is the one that sheds a little bit. It's a little harder to work with, but I still have plenty of it, so I'm using it up. All right, so then I'm going to take glue dots again as soon as I find them. Goodness. And I'm just going to put one back up this way. And come down this way. So this one's all kinds of bling. And I think I'd like it to be a little less. And we'll put dimensionals at the top and the bottom in the center. That way they'll go on the belly band. All right, anybody know where my belly band went? Here it is. For the sake of, I don't want this to have to dry. Just gonna use some fast fuse. Fast fuse remains on the clearance rack. I have quite a stockpile. I really like using fast fuse. And there you go. Isn't that pretty? Got a little glimmer, a little bling to it. Oh, you know, I did forget to do that again. Did you all catch that? I didn't put any adhesive here to make the pocket. So you could use Tombow on this or Fast Fuse or Snail. Fast Fuse is what I had. That's what I used. And you could stamp a greeting on that little narrow piece, or that can be where you just write your greeting. Okay, come on. I got this one kind of tight. And I got a little adhesive on the side. There you go. So that's number two. Can't figure out where to set it. Um, okay, so there's number two. Then number three. This one is the third one made from the All is Bright designer series paper, right? I showed you that opened up. Had it opened up here. All right, so tied it in a knot and then open it. Have a liner here. Okay. And the ribbon's not stuck. Okay, that's fine. This is the one that I made from the retired paper. And I just I love this. I think this is beautiful. So it uses a piece of designer series paper that measures five by seven and three quarters. So you're going to get what? Two. You're going to get two with a good amount left over from a single sheet of designer series paper. Maybe I should do the stripe side this time. No, 
and I really like the other side. All right, so I've got a, um, a liner for the inside. Remember, very vanilla matches this cardstock, so that is what I'm using. And this piece of vanilla is three and a half by four and three quarters. And you would just stick your gift card to it. Right. And then you can have a piece of um I don't know that it really matters which side. I think they're not quite the same length, but Maybe they are. I don't even know. But I want glue dots again for this glimmer paper. And I'm just going to let part of it peek through. I'm going to take about three glue dots and I'm putting on this, this on what would be the top of the paper. And then just to keep it straight, I've just lined it up with the top of this bottom flap. Oops. And then I'll bring the top flap over and it'll pick up the paper. How about that, right? Pretty easy. And that is um, five by half of an inch for that paper. And then I need some ribbon for this. On that. So let's stamp the greeting. So I punched out in the label punch. Now you could do you could do what we did before, right? And cut punch use the same punch and cut it in half and add some border. Or I used a different label punch. I know I've got some scrap cherry cobbler over here. There it is. So I've got that. Now I need to stamp um, I just really like that. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Oh, choices, choices, choices. Okay. I like this because it's got this little scroll that kind of looks like it goes with the design of the paper. Can you see that? You see what I mean? So here's a label. Already punched. I could use my Stamparatus and line this up, but these are photopolymer stamps. It's really not that hard to line it up already punched. Or you can stamp it and then punch it. Whichever is easier for you. There you go. Now when you are working with photopolymer stamps and kind of a red or a purple ink, your stamps are going to be, have a pink or a red tint to them after that. That's just fine. Nothing wrong with your stamps. It's just um, what photopolymer does. Now, to prevent that somewhat, you can stamp first in like Versamark or in a really pale color, soft sea foam or a pale pink, and then it won't pick up quite as much of your red, perhaps. Okay, and then I'm using these gold faceted gems on either end. You know, my projects, I like to have some Stella, and I like to use um, dimensionals, and who can turn down a little bit of bling like a rhinestone or a pearl, right? Well, you could, but now there's a trick here. I am only going to adhere the top of my label, because it's going to hang over if I, if I put dimensionals on the bottom of it, then I'm going to seal this closed, and that's not what I want to do. Okay. 
maybe I still have some of this ribbon because I'm struggling to tie it. Maybe I should have left it in my retired for sale pile. It's kind of a seam binding, I think it was called, which tends to ravel, so I needed to cut a little longer than I really wanted it to be. It was not so pretty. All right, so I'm just going to put dimensionals on the, across the top. Let's see where it goes like that. So, are you catching on how really? beautiful and fast and easy these are and now that that punch box is on sale it's such a bargain and you can do so much with it we still have tags to, to go and gift bags and boxes that we're going to use with it as well um, so it's you it's you it's really pretty yeah, I, I, I definitely recommend it uh, so this one is the, the gift hold, card holder that uses an envelope, right? So I've already cut an um, sealed an envelope and cut it in half. So here's the other, here's the other half of it, okay? And then the strip of designer series paper is two and a half by ten and a half. So again, I'm going to get a whole lot of them from just a single sheet of paper and a few envelopes. Then um, there's an insert for you to put your gift card on, and it is four and a quarter by two and three quarters. Right? So this is the one from the All is Bright paper, and this is the one from my retired paper. So let's set this over here. So my envelope, I sealed it, right? and then cut it in half. Can you see how it's, you see which way to cut it in half, right? And then that makes this little flap here. And then I've got a piece of garden green cardstock for my gift card to go on. And then I have two of the pretty label punches, one in vanilla and one in the gold foil. And, um... I think for this one, oops, wrong stamp. I want to use the Peace and Joy, right? And I'm going to use markers for this. Now, I don't have to. I can certainly stamp it all in one color, but I thought it might be pretty to do the, the Peace and Joy in red and the Pine Boughs in Garden Green. However, my Cherry Cobbler marker has run away. Oh, there it is. Found it. So the the secret is you take the brush end of your marker, and this is our basic um, stamp and write marker, and you just color. So I'm just coloring the peace and joy. I'm gonna get the and and then there are three little holly berries. And there's the piece. Come down here and get the joy. And same thing, the holly berries. And I think I've gotten them. And then I'll come back with the green do the pine. I think they're pine. You know, now that I've said that several times, I'm like, hmm. We're going to call it Christmas Greenery. Oh, shoot. I think I might have bumped my E a little bit with the green. Now, these inks dry pretty fast, so I need to re-moisten it before I stamp it. So I go, it's called huffing, you know, deer's huff, 
that's a little different. And then I'm just going to center this, stamp down. So I could have done a little bit better job on the coloring here. But it's okay. I like the two, the two colors. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with this stamp that we've done on the other label. And cut it in half, and then it's going to form its own border. And that Tombow on the foil paper is going to wiggle around a bit. I need to be careful. Another adhesive would probably have been a better choice. Now I want to pick this up and bring it over here. Oops. And I'll use a couple more faceted gems on this one. And you know, I could come back with my marker and fill in the pieces that kind of got missed. Make the joy forget about that. I have a friend, Lynn, that is really good at remembering and taking a marker and filling in any pieces that don't ink really well. And I'm kind of doing this in a hurry, so I cannot at all say I'm doing the best job this is kind of a different font. Okay. Yeah. I think I like that a little bit better. And what's it to do with it? In this. And now I have it because I stuck the green inside it. Here it is. It's an envelope, my strip of paper. Now, this is not even scored. I'm just going to kind of wrap it around. I'm just eyeballing it. And I can glue it down to the envelope. Just want to be sure I'm going to line up my ends. place and then <laughs> dimensionals on the label. I'm going to mess of glue back there. Get kind of centered. And you could add a ribbon in that, to that as well, but you don't need to. There you go. Really pretty. And then the last one is kind of an interesting fold. It's called a Z fold. So I've got a piece of um, thick, very vanilla cardstock, and it is three and three quarters 
by 7 and 7 eighths this way, and then it scored it 2 and, two and 3, 2 and 5 eighths and 5 and a quarter, okay? But you fold it like that, so it makes the Z. Finish your edges, and then, well, I didn't even show you. Okay, so this is the one with um, the All is Bright um, designer series paper, piece of gold sequins, um, Merry Christmas, and your gift card holder comes right in here. And you've got a piece of designer series paper on the front and the back, right? So that's the one. Then this is the one I made from the retired designer series paper. Still, the card comes right in here. So I've got very vanilla, and then I have this really pretty paper. The only trick to this is if your paper is directional, you want to pay attention to the fact that, um, and this is um, flush on either end. It just we're just leaving a border at the top and the bottom, but it's coming side to side this way. Okay, but then my paper, my designer chair's paper is going to come on this side, which is a good thing. So I kind of made a gummy back up here. I'm guessing that my silicone mat needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Okay. Then a piece of ribbon. Then did you notice there were no bows on any of these either? It's all just knots. This one, I tied one half of the knot, and then I added the gold sequin trim, and I'm going to wiggle this around after I get it tied, and it probably won't cooperate because I'm asking it to. Maybe it will. Nope, it's trying to slide. Did you see it? No, it's going to be too... No, it's not too loose. Okay. Alright, so... Have you all been crafting today, or shopping today, wrapping today? What have you been up to? This one I did in green. Jingle all the way. We haven't used that one. So, how many of you have this punch box? I know I can think of several of you that do. Now, when you're working with a solid image, Celine Kempton taught me this. I press down and say, Michelle is great. Michelle is great. Michelle is great. And then looked up, I've got a great image. So it's not trying to focus. There it is. Except for this little bubble, which looks like it might be a hair. Oh, look at that. Yep, something on my stand there. Let's see if I've got another. Which I don't. Well, I'll just punch another one. And you know what? Actually, I need to show you the other way. Um, so let's gently ink up the stamp. 
I think I got that little bubble out of the way. Stamp down. Michelle is great. Michelle is great. Michelle is great. Now, you don't have to use my name. You can insert your own name when you're saying that. Blows up my ink pad. So I've got the host code showing as well as the link to my website. Um, I would um, appreciate if you are placing an order and you don't have a demonstrator, if you would order from me. Um, I'll be sure and send you a, a thank you card and a coupon for a sale the end of the month. It's my personal sale, though. You'll have to order through me. You won't be able to order on directly on the website. All right, so I'm going to cut this. There they are. Cut this in half. The post code is showing all of the, you know, be sure and pick up the items that are retiring. Some of them are discounted, some of them are not, but they are while supplies last. So don't don't hesitate. Reach out if I can help you in any way with that order. And don't go away. I want to show you these finished product projects and the sneak peek of a couple of things from the new occasions catalog. I've gotten some items in a pre-order. I will have catalogs available um, at the class next week, as well as some items on display. There you go. Jingle all the way. Gift card goes here. So how cute, right? All right, let's clean off this so that you can see. So we can bring these all out. All right. So use up your paper. Don't be shy. There you go. And here are the ones from the All is Bright paper. Oops. Let's get them all out here. I've gotten all of them except for this one. This over here. So you can make so many gift card holders with this. And we're going to show, I'm going to do some gift tags and gift bags um, in the next few, in the upcoming videos. So don't miss that. Now, where on earth? Okay. I'm going to switch back to the other view, I think. Uh, that's, bear with me. Sorry about this, guys. I'm here. This. Okay, yeah, here we go. All right, so. Oh, but the light might have been better if I'd done the other way. Can you see? Isn't this pretty? This is from the Mint to Be. I believe that's the correct, correct thing. Um, there are some heart-shaped framelits. Look at this adorable embossing folder. Cute. The little coloring. Got some glimmer paper there as well. Isn't that pretty? And I like circles. I like that. And then behind me, isn't that so cute? So the frame is actually made out of cardstock as well. And then the wood grain designer series paper and spelling out love. So pretty little Valentine's decoration. Um, I think that's it. Everybody, have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for being here. I'll be back with more videos. We're going to use this same set of stamps and continue on making um, gift tags and bags 
Here's one gift bag that I made earlier today. Now I didn't use the same stamp set. I did use the Feathers and Frost, which I'm so in love with, but um, we will make some um, bags using these tags as well from the Christmas Tradition Punch Box Kit. So everybody, have a great evening. If I can help you place an order, I would so appreciate it. You're welcome to share my video if you think you picked up some tips that others might be benefit from as well. Have a great night. Bye-bye.